I would like to uh, utilize this great opportunity uh, to benefit all audience and uh, other team members I have. Uh, one of my key team members is Eric Bill, another one is Ashley Clark. Okay, so after listening to the conversation between me and the Paul, and then listen to a very good example from Paul, we had some more questions. So hope Paul could give us some guidance or your insight of the for the puzzle or the question we have. Okay, so we like to start with Eric. See based on the conversation today or based on the understanding of the topic of the book, Innovation Crunching Tiger, and uh, Paul's expertise. What question you may have for Paul? Yeah. Hi, Paul. Uh, uh, please allow me to ask in Chinese. Because when we are writing this book, we are talking about the whole world in the 创新领域，然后在特定区域上面的一些发展。那我们也会想到，台湾的年轻人其实面对着整个全球化的趋势，他们面对的是一个全球化的创新的挑战。啊，那但是因为这个年代的年轻人，其实他们接受的是一种全球化的环境，互联网 （Internet）。然后，比如说他们看迪士尼的好莱坞的电影，然后接收到的东西可能都非常的全球化的信息，所以。美国的、日本的、中国的、台湾的年轻人，其实他们可能成长背景吸收到的信息都很像，但是如何台湾的年轻人在这些同质化很高的这个背景之下，能够发挥自己的优势来创造属于台湾新一代的创新的优势 ？Good question. I really like to find a solution to that, but there is no easy solution. This is a uh, related to the, our educational system, related to the visionary approach our society can provide to the younger people. Now, I, I use a couple of examples. I'm afraid I don't have a definite answer, but I think we should jointly search for answer. Mm -hmm. Right, Corinne, Corinne, uh, what's the English name of the dance called Qi Ma Wu? Okay. It's a, probably the ugliest dance okay. I have ever What's seen. A Korean singer. Yeah. Uh, it's called the fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that dance? The, the, the Korean uh, group popular. invented. Yeah. yeah I it's know. like I don't uh, know riding a horse. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. yeah. no, that dance is so ugly by my standard. Okay. okay. But it become very popular yeah. worldwide. Not for long, for two or three years. Yes. Okay, along with the music. Yes. But I will still give them credit. Yeah. That at least okay. uh, they come up with a dance yes. along with uh, some strange music yeah. and become popular globally yes. for two or three years. I cannot think of any song or dance become popular, you know, created by the Taiwanese young people uh -huh. become popular. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, our vision is limited to the uh, certain tribe, tribal dance. But there are other tribal dance too, like uh, the Irish, uh, Irish jigs. Okay, and they turn that into a global performance team. Mm -hmm. River dance. The river dance. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know how to provide a solution, but it's uh, depend on a few people's click in the mind mm, yeah. say hey we can take that go for it yeah. so in your point of view it's not only te technology wise maybe uh, culture wise uh, it's business just model a wise yeah. you know, how how business model would hit the uh, heart yeah. of uh, people from different culture different country mm -hmm. yeah. okay not just to be consumed you know by us locally yes, yes. For instance, uh, Chinese opera. Uh, my mother's generation, they love Chinese opera, mm. but it's dying <laughs> because music is not okay, so attractive. Right. Yeah. Right. On the other hand, uh, you know, for a while I was studying, you know, not practicing dancing, but studying dancing. Mm. You know, like uh, the uh, African American jazz. 
Yes. American Jets American is, is uh, you know, the son of the Orleans. And, and these jazz actually very much uh, affected by the Af African culture. A simple beat, simple move, but they make it more, a little more complicated. But everybody loves it. Okay? So, and as a reason, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, uh, but it's very hard to grasp. Right. Okay? You, you want me to uh, teach a group of young Taiwanese you say, hey, please go global. Right. They, they can go global, they travel around the world but coming back without any innovative ideas. That's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. But how to change the mindset mm -hmm. of young people? I'm, I'm still searching for a way. I think we should all do the same. Sure. Yeah, find a way for them to, 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 to become global. Now, can you think of any uh, song, music, or food uh, can utilize certain business model to mm -hmm. become global. The only thing I can think of is Zhenzhou mm -hmm. Nai Cha. Oh, yeah. Very special. Zhenzhou Nai Cha is easy to copy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Pearl tea. Yeah. Pearl tea. Yeah. <laughs> Pearl milk tea. Yeah. Okay. It's very easy to copy, okay? So I think after another couple of decades, it's not a Taiwanese uh, specialty anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. But uh, oh, when you go answer, I think that there this this is something you have been doing, right? Um, for example, the young generation, like Eric just mentioned, mm -hmm. they receive information differently from us. They look at the, their their phone, look at the video to listen to others' uh, drama, to, to others' conversation. And this is what you are doing, right? You used to teach in school mm -hmm. and oh. study, right? To students, physically. But the way people receive information, receive news is changing, right? Just like we just discussed, mm -hmm. the world is <coughs> digitalized. So for us to explore how might young generation to mm -hmm. go global, they need to receive those yes. insights, uh, those input from older, more senior generation, like in your age. But the way of communication to them probably need to change. Mm -hmm. Change to like what Pat has been doing. Should record our conversation, no. put on the internet. People everywhere, even on the bus, even in the restroom, they could read and listen yeah. to your yeah. input and yeah. then start to think, okay, we may go broad and then let me listen to some of the story from Paul. So that is what you have been doing. Right? The reason why I took two intern, you know, two students, they, they came to Taiwan to study. Uh -huh. One is Russian, another is American, but it was a Ukrainian background. So I mean, you know, they regularly come to the office and uh, I explained to them the uh, past of Taiwan's economic, social, political development. Yeah. So the Russian student came out, you know, I asked her, I said, you know, after I, I explained to you this, after you took lesson from me, uh, I'd like you to draw a sort of a, a, an outline of what's needed in Russia. You know, she came up with a very good, uh, the first piece of document mm -hmm. and say, you know, we need this, we need that. Learn from Taiwan's experience. What can be copied in Ukraine? Okay. For instance, uh, I've been telling them, I said, well, uh, you know, smart city, right? What is smart city? Mm -hmm. But how about smart village? Okay. okay. To lift the uh, Ukrainian peasants from poverty. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can think about using local agricultural produce to develop some uh, famous uh, globally acceptable mm -hmm. processed food. Okay. Like I, I, when, once I went to Switzerland, <clears throat> person in the Taiwan liquor store, I found out, hey, this is a, a peach brandy. They have a whole peach inside. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? Okay. So uh, to me, it's a big question mark. Mm -hmm. 
how can they make it happen? Take two pieces of, uh, uh, they cut it, the bottle into two pieces and put them together? No. Uh, finally, on one my trip to Switzerland, I asked him, oh, they said we hang the bottle on the peach tree. The peach was that small, we put it inside, oh, yeah. and we seal the top, so uh, there's uh, uh, no insect will go in and uh, okay. just hang the tree and then maybe put something to support the bottle. And then when it grew bigger, bigger, and then it put, put some brandy inside. Mm -hmm. no, Every country can be innovative, think about some new idea. But uh, Taiwan student, Taiwan has very limited resources. The Taiwan student could utilize those relationships. I talk about Russia, Siberia has the best wood, and Taiwan has a very strong uh, wooden furniture maker. And they export wooden furniture to the United States. That's been going on for for ages. Yeah. But to as far as Russia is concerned, they should attract those investors to come in to process the wood. Yeah. Okay? Because this expert <coughs> in furniture making, he said probably the best wood now mm -hmm. existing in the world is right. Siberia. Because the cold weather, the, the wood quality is very, very good. Yeah. But anyway, uh, thinking globally. Yeah. Yes. So I think the best way is not come up with a high theory. The best way is come up with an example. And it's uh, another example. Yeah. You can bring it back to the United States. I think we all travel to the United States in the duty-free shop and, and at the airport, they have this uh, beef jerky. You know, the story is that the American cowboy, you know, used to make the beef jerky. And, 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 and when they travel on the horseback, they bring that and, and they can camp anywhere and they slice it. Okay. It's terrible. <laughs> okay? It's a taste is awful. Okay. okay? Uh, have you ever had it? Not many times, actually, yeah, but well, yeah. Okay, one time is enough, one time is enough. But how about Taiwan can transfer Taiwan beef jerky with 10 different flavors? America has a lot of beef, right? And uh, I talked to the Paraguay ambassador to Taiwan. I said, what's the local produce? Beef. He said, how do you treat the beef? Well, we export it. That's why you have for oh, raw meat. So um, I, I gave them the idea. I said, why don't we find a Taiwan uh, beef jerky maker with 10 different flavors, fu yu. Okay. Introduce them to Paraguay to set up a beef jerky plant. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can export to the United States too. Okay. Now, this idea all need somebody to carry out. Okay? Now, at my age, I cannot, you know, materialize every idea I have. But I would say, let's make those ideas a popular movement. Right. Right. Somebody look at something in Taiwan, which is pretty good with, uh, say, unique technology. The beef jerky is one. But we can even think about lamb jerky. Lamb jerky is not in existence yet, but using hala mm -hmm. method to process lamb jerky, and there's a two billion Muslim population around the world. So I can envision every Arab had a bag of lamb jerky <laughs> with the uh, Taiwan invented flavor. Anybody can you take this idea and make money out of it. That's but yeah. when they make money, don't forget, they have to believe in stakeholder capitalism. I do have a question. Um, I'm really interested in asking a question also about the younger generation, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and during our conversation about the coronavirus pandemic, we talked about 
um, the importance of going into this situation with optimism and yeah. seeing new opportunities or chances that we have. Mm -hmm. So, but also, you know, a lot of students are being affected quite a lot by yeah, the crazy. pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they're unable to attend school or school is going totally online. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different situations are happening. So I guess I'm wondering if you have any advice or ways of looking at this situation that could help bring about new opportunities for these younger people. You know, talking about people, the average people around the world are talking about a younger generation in the United States in particular. I think um, a lot of these problems are affecting many different populations around the world, but I being from the United States, I am thinking, I guess, more so about that, but yeah. Okay. Now, there are two ways. Okay? One is uh, bringing new idea to the United States. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to Eric's question, mm -hmm. I think the average American, especially high school education, uh, also lack you know, global training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. orientation of uh, the global needs, uh, care of other people. Mm -hmm. But however, America has one advantage that your previous generation, or maybe 100 years ago, you, the, the immigrant from Europe, or from you know, all around the world, mm -hmm. uh, become entrepreneur in the United States. So don't underestimate the power of immigrants. Mm -hmm. okay? You bring the immigrants from Europe first and then and later on from Asia brought a lot of ideas to the United States. Okay. So in the, in their home country, they could not uh, become an entrepreneur because of uh, lack of capital, because of uh, the hierarchies, uh, government policy constraint. Mm -hmm. But when they migrate to the United States, they become pioneer. Okay. Taiwan the same. Most of the Han population or Hakka population, or they're also Han, uh, they came to Taiwan like, like your ancestor, uh, I don't know about your ancestor, oh, it's, it's uh, yeah. from Fukien province. And the reason they have to leave their hometown is for the same reason those uh, immigrants to the United States had to leave Europe, their hometown, because of the natural disasters mm -hmm. and uh, uh, also, uh, poverty, uh, wars, and uh, uh, local conflict, uh, uh, suppressing by one group or another group, so suppression, you know, uh, of different classes of people. So they had to leave. They leave, they went to the United States, uh, so they had to be innovative mm -hmm. to make a living. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you heard of the story that uh, once I traveled to Ireland, I have a very good friend, he's American, but uh, originally ancestor came from Ireland. We visited Galway in Ireland. And those are in the, during the uh, potato famine. A lot of Irish immigrants aboard a ship in Galway sailed to America. But at that time, there's no modern technology. Some ship landed in the southern part, of the southern port. Some ship landed in the northern port. Mm -hmm. So when they landed, they immediately they had no job and they recruited into the uh, uh, Union Army and in the south, the Confederate Army. So the brothers will fight each other mm -hmm. in the battlefield. There's a lot of sad story behind. Mm -hmm. okay? But this is the story of immigrants. They had to struggle to make a living. The ancestors of most of the Han Taiwanese, okay, mm -hmm. they came this way. Uh, same that the American Indian uh, being suppressed by the uh, European immigrants. And mm -hmm. our uh, Aborigine tribe also suppressed by it. Mm -hmm. So the story repeats mm -hmm. and repeats and repeats. Mm -hmm. So the we have to learn some lesson from it. Okay. For instance, when your ancestor from Hakka came to Taiwan, good lands already being occupied by the Fukienese. Mm. 
So they had to find the bad land. They had to deal a lot with the Aborigines tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing happened in the United States. Yeah. Under high pressure, pe people become innovative. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, what's the pressure in Taiwan? A lot. Okay. We have a small piece of land. We have absolutely no natural resources. Now, how are we going to survive? But we came up with uh, some global industry which is uh, our pride, right? Like TSMC and uh, many more. Right. Yeah. And uh, the best Thai restaurant chain is is not uh, created by a Thai, but created by one of our friends. <laughs> in Taiwan. <laughs> in Taiwan. <laughs> so, pressure is a good thing. And now we have uh, all kind of pressure, pressure from the threat from mainland China, uh, pressure from uh, we are squeezing to, to big power, and uh, uh, pressure from uh, uh, changing technology and all that. Mm -hmm. But so far we have survived, okay? But I think we should uh, continue to be a survivor in the future. So, to answer your question, how we can jointly instigate some changes. The first thing, well, I say this jokingly, okay? Maybe not so much jokingly. The first thing is to give the educational institute full freedom of develop their curriculum. Yeah. Come to think about, we don't really need the Ministry of Education. I don't know what they are for. I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, giving every chance to explore the human brain power. And that, that we, we need a lot of changes. And this is one of the changes. Mm -hmm. So, you're studying at Taida, right? Yeah, Zhengda. I'm studying uh, Mandarin at Shida. Oh, oh, okay, Shida. Okay. Yeah. So you look at this campus, you look at uh, uh, the uh, student body, look at the professor. They all have to comply with the ministry education policy, mm -hmm. which is uh, probably the, the, the worst thing happened to Taiwan. Because, uh, these officials, they don't understand, you know, they are limiting the imagination of our students. That's why I created Apple Foundation, which mm -hmm. is totally without uh, the, outside the jurisdiction of Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. I used two case studies uh, that happened in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, this actually you should feel a little proud of. Well, these are all old case studies. Uh, one is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, very few countries, mm -hmm. they can have an industry produce a product that was sustaining in the marketplace for more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. okay. As you see, CNN has a program called 100 Year you know, Industry. It's a, you know, from time to time, they have this very short program, like two minutes, see, okay. that describe a, a, a hundred year old. Now, <coughs> Coca Cola uh, is known that they never had the recipe patented. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Now, usually when I tell the story, I would say either the founder was uh, so goddamn stupid or so smart, stupid because he is, he has forgotten there's such a thing called pattern. Mm -hmm. Smart is he knows about pattern, but he also knows pattern can be valid for only 20 years. years. The longest of 20 years, some country even have less. He kept his recipe secret, but Coca-Cola is a drink is so popular around the world, there's no question about it. Yeah. 
Now, let me ask three of you a question. What keeps them so successful? Is that recipe? I think it's the recipe is just a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Apparently not, right? This go back to my 20-80% rule. 20-80% means 20% is the technology, 80% is the business model. Yeah, okay. okay. So what is their business model? We will quiz. What is the business model of Coca-Cola? Why they are yeah. so successful in the okay. for hundreds of years. Yeah. The business model is called bottling plan. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody in any country say, I have some money. Uh, I know Coca-Cola is a profitable business. I want to invest in Coca-Cola. Okay, so what would be Coca-Cola's response? Say, sure, welcome. Okay, if a uh, more country wants to invest in Coca-Cola, mm-hmm. the more money we can make. So, what kind of money they are making? First of all, they're selling a bottle in play, and they don't mind uh, in selling the plan. Also, teach them how to operate the plan, mm-hmm. right? So the bottle, autom- automation equipment and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> so they make some money from that. Second, they, they make money from trademark licensing. So you have to use the trademark, Coca-Cola. It's IP, yeah. Coca used to be my client okay, mm-hmm. in that one <coughs> when I was practicing law. Then, uh, what's What's the other money they are making? They said there's a condition. Okay. You had to buy the syrup, the concentrate. Okay. That's Just true. buy it. Uh-huh. Okay. We would never license the trade secret to you. Mm-hmm. So, so instead, the secret recipe is kept secret place. Okay. They are, they are selling the syrup produced from the recipe. They would never teach other people the recipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is how they make money. <laughs> Business model. Sorry too. Have you ever had Spam? The, the canned meat. I actually haven't, <laughs> but my, my family has. <laughs> oh, really? Your family has? Yeah, yes. Why don't you have a funny story? It's a... It's an MIT professor, yeah. a lady, Fitzgerald. Okay. Yeah. You know, have you ever taken time? I am, I Yeah. yeah. Uh, her name is Fitzgerald. Okay. She wrote a book about the history of uh, food. The American Defense Department during World War II. They know that American soldiers will be fighting in the extreme cold weather and also extreme hot weather. Extreme hot weather will be like a, 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 a Guadalcanal. This is the, uh, the island near Indonesia. Oh, okay. Tropical oh, island. Guadalcanal, right? Yeah. And the coldest place the American soldiers will fight. At that time, they, they were not sure they would be fighting in uh, in Europe. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, sending a lot of troops to Europe. But the coldest place at that time was Illusion Island. Illusion mm-hmm. Island was occupied by the Japanese. Mm-hmm. So they had to take Illusion Island from the Japanese. So they said, anyway, they open, uh, they, they, they have a issue a bit. They said, uh, we need some kind of food with uh, uh, enough protein that can be consumed by American soldiers. Okay. You know, fighting either in extreme cold weather or the uh, extreme hot weather. So this company uh, developed Spam. Yeah. 
uh, then they moved to year 2008 during the global financial crisis. Average people don't have money mm -hmm. to go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So the Spain's uh, stock price goes sky high. Mm -hmm. Even a processed food uh -huh. can be consumed globally. Mm -hmm. okay. So globalization yeah. okay. has Taiwan Develop any food. I think the best change is uh, neuro guy, mm, yeah. beef jerky. Yeah. But nobody is doing that. Yeah. Okay. So the, this is a good story. Even the food is not so tasty, it could still market globally. That's what you are saying, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't have problem with that. Yeah, that's a matter of opinion. I, I, I think. <laughs> I don't want to have every day, but I think occasionally Spain to make a sandwich with a piece of cheese on it is okay. quite tasty. Yeah. But I ask you because uh, it's really uh, uh, a painful point for many students. Uh, I work in China most of the time. Many uh, Chinese young generation they went overseas <coughs> went to Europe, and now they are facing a difficult decision whether they should move back to China or continue to pursue their higher education. Um, to them, they probably will know, okay, business model, 80% is the way to go. But they still in this learning process. They haven't yet finished the education that is supposed to change it, like you said. But the system still there, they still in this pipeline. And they couldn't see what will happen at the end of this pipeline. So for this kind of group of people, what would you say to them? Let's go back to the uh, three capitalism. Okay? Yes. My personal belief is state capitalism would never work. Policy measure levy on Jack Ma or Alibaba okay? may have some legitimacy. You can talk about antitrust. Uh -huh. You can talk about anti-monopoly. You can talk about this theory, high theory. But. Under state capitalism, we often forgot that the wealth of Jack Ma doesn't really be, belong to himself. It's actually, actually belong to the state. Mm -hmm. okay. So I was uh, very puzzled by China's uh, changing of, of political system. Mm -hmm. We know Deng Xiaoping era, he became aware of uh, uh, since, since PRC government is practicing uh, so-called uh, social ego distribution, but without without a, a policy to accumulate wealth. But only talk about distribution of wealth, mm. it's not enough. Right? That's why communism in most countries fail. Yeah, you can count on your one hand how many communist countries you have there. So Deng Xiaoping tried to change that. Mm. Yeah. So under his uh, reform policy, uh, he created a, you know, China has no lack of smart people, okay? Mm. So they create a lot of tycoon, a lot of rich people. Okay. Mm. And then Xi Jinping come in and uh, says, you know, you have to uh, uh, get the advice from the Communist Party. But the important thing is the constitution of PRC has not changed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I get that confirmed. Mm -hmm. The constitution of PRC is still uh, adhere to the theory dictatorship by proletariat. Mm -hmm. So the constitution still has that language. Yeah. So they can anytime they can come out and say, oh, well, mm -hmm. 
so and so, you are too rich. You are against the constitution. They are taking your wealth away. It's nothing. The property right concept is 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 not clear under the very constitution. So in the long long run, mm -hmm. I'm afraid the Chinese population probably find it difficult to accept that kind of system forever. Yeah. Now, how to come up with a, a more even system, more f fair system? I think the answer lies in the stakeholder capitalism. Mm -hmm. Stakeholder including employee, they're not shareholder. Employee, consumer, uh, average people uh, that uh, the law will pro protect them from pollution and then uh, uh, encourage a small, medium sized business who are in the supply chain. I don't know. I hope there's a better answer. Mm -hmm. So we ask you to explore. <coughs> Um, I admire uh, Professor Xi a lot because you uh, made a lot of contribution to Taiwan and the regional economy by means of uh, do the con connection to uh, advanced academy uh, in the world. Yeah. So, so I think uh, uh, it would be a very good way for us to to help the lower. Places to to raise uh, faster, mm -hmm. but uh, World War uh, bend the, uh, the the trade war trade bend war. the communication mm -hmm. uh, between uh, <coughs> West and East. So, what's the next will happen? And in Taiwan, how we can survive in between? Taiwan already survived. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Trade wars between yeah. two big power. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I don't want to waste time talking about Donald Trump's policy. Okay. <laughs> and that's uh, he's in the past. Right? His time is over. <clears throat> but I'm talking about uh, how we build a stakeholder capitalism mm -hmm. in lieu of shareholder capitalism mm -hmm. and in state, lieu state of stakeholder. state capitalism. Okay. Stakeholder, stakeholder mm -hmm. in lieu of capitalism okay, in lieu of uh, shareholder capitalism and the state capitalism. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. I think the answer is there. Okay. Okay? And of course you cannot deny the fact mm -hmm. that among people, you know, what's the fairness, okay? Among the people, the most smarter can get richer, some dumber will remain to be poor, and that's, oh, some lazy people will remain to be poor, okay? uh, Some uh, rich and lazy people, the wealth will not pass for three generations, as the old Chinese say. <laughs> Fu Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all these norms still exist. Mm. Yeah. But that's why I devote much of my time in encouraging entrepreneurship and startup company. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way. Yeah. Uh, for uh, in in this crucial moment, I want to in introduce a new ph phenomenon. Our world constantly facing the redistribution of wealth. Mm -hmm. okay. For bad reason, war, okay. civil war, send rich people's wealth, you know, instantly disappear. But when the war is over, and you got people, a new generation of people, to create wealth again. Yeah. 
of Great Depression in the 1930s caused a lot of people who lost their wealth. But when it's over, then you have a different generation of people to accumulate wealth. So I call this phenomenon redistribution of wealth. It happened all the time. Yeah. And, and during the past thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. Very good opportunity for us to meet uh, Hoshi. Uh, Mr. Hoshi, uh, his uh, experience gives us a lot of wisdom uh, and uh, direction in the future. I, Especially for me, I think in my generation, it's a good opportunity to to listen to him and learn from him and uh, give us some suggestion. <coughs> although we have our opinion, although we have our uh, knowledge, but I think it's always be good to listen to the the experienced people and and the wisdom people. So it's a very good opportunity for me for us. Not to be here to be with uh, Miss Paul Poshi. Yeah, that's great. Thank so, you so much.